Hello, everyone. Welcome back. And this is Bite Sexual, where we are 50% serious and 100% fabulous. Oh, Jessica, I think, are you muted? That's weird. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you are. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I don't know what was going on. Oh, that's that is super weird. It's okay. It's okay. Um, you know, technical difficulties set aside. We are finally talking about one of my favorite drag movies. But first of all, we were off for a few weeks. So, what cool place did you get to visit while we were on the East Coast? So I got to visit Boston and I spent some time with my best friend and uh, another one of my friends from around here who had moved to the East Coast as well. And so it was a ton of fun. I did a lot of like night walks by myself and like just sightseeing and yeah, it was good. Oh, that's cool. Anything, anything in particular stand out about Boston? I mean, I did startle an entire group of white people, which you know I love. You know I love. <laughs> What? Well, because what? here's the thing. It was like nighttime and I'm just like, I had my hair down and my hair is like long right now. And it was like, you know, but I just like, I love wandering around cities like a phantom. And I just, I love the anonymity and I love just looking at people and like looking at stuff and just like not quite being a part of stuff, but like definitely watching it. You know what I mean? And so I like walking around at night, especially, and there's just like a ton of a ton of people out at night in Boston and it was over a weekend. So there were a ton of people out, but there were the, this cool, like Harbor walk that it's all these green sidewalks that follow along the Harbor. And it's like a public access walkway and it's so cool. And so I just spent a ton of time walking this public access walkway. And so as I'm walking it, there's like this group of white people who are like in the entire thing, right? They're, they're blocking the entire public walkway. And I'm just like, and they're not paying attention to me. Again, it's like nighttime, you know. And so this one guy sees me and kind of like moves because I was, I'm like, I'm walking through their group, right? I'm like, I'm going to do it. So I did. I just like, whew, like just wander through their group, right? And like the, the one guy knew, but everyone else was like, you know, shock, surprise, you know, whatever. And I didn't have to walk through the group, by the way. Let me just say, like, it was a parking lot. Like, I definitely could have gone around them, but it was the principle of the matter, like, the entitlement. It's the entitlement for me. Like, this isn't right. your walkway. So I walked through them. And then as I'm literally, because it's like a horseshoe. Again, I didn't have to walk through them. I didn't even have to do this horseshoe. It was a... <laughs> this woman goes, she just walked right through us. And I was like, that's it. That's it. I'm going to be the talk of this little white group about how this like mysterious phantom lady just like whoo, morphed through their group and how yeah. dare they walk on a public walkway. Oh, how dare they? How dare they? Uh, it's the privilege for me because, you know, people of color always have to be aware of the space they're taking up. You know, I'll tell you what, I stopped saying excuse me or pardon me and moving out of people's way. Mm -hmm. I, I stopped doing that because, listen, if you feel the need to take up the same space as me and then, you know, and I, I will admittedly, women don't do it as much as men do. Just saying. Just saying. So, you know, men or what, be on the same, on a collision course with me and not even blink, excuse me, I will bump right into him. Yep. And and if I if I'm feeling real if I'm really feeling like choosing violence, excuse you, excuse you. <laughs> well, and what the most to me is like, and it's again, it's 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 guys. When I've seen this, it's been guys. It's not women because it's like we are always made to move out of the way. Like this isn't usually the thing we're we're tasked with of, of taking up space, you know, especially people of color, like you said. I like to play sidewalk chicken, which is where you just walk on your correct side of the sidewalk. And if there happens to be a man, you just continue walking on your correct side of the sidewalk. And I will tell you fucking what. Boom. Every, boom. 
shoulder check. I will, I will shoulder check a fucker. And like, you want to talk about me being made fun of for having some like quarterback shoulders? I'll fucking check you with these things. You want a piece? <laughs> yeah. Listen, uh, I'm, I'm like four foot eleven. So if I start throwing elbows, bro, you're catching it in the balls. Just saying. Right. I'm just built at that height. Okay. So <laughs> that's a good way to get knocked off balance. <laughs> exactly. Just like, listen, walk on the left side of the road. I will walk on the right side of the street and, you know, we will be okay. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and, and like if all else fails and collision is unavoidable, just say, just say, excuse me, just say, excuse, excuse me. me. I love it. Let's <laughs> practice it with, practice it with me, everyone. <laughs> excuse me. Uh, speaking of bumping into people, mm -hmm. you know what city I went to? Yeah. Automatically. I'm bumping into people. <laughs> Speaking of bumping into people, you already know I'm going to the Big Apple. Why? Because I love y'all. That's why. <laughs> you got pizza. You got street vendors. You got everything. Museums, old architecture, dingy, dirty places that smell like piss and shit. And then at the same time, you got some of the oldest, most beautiful architecture Damn it, New York, I love you so much, but, <sighs> and whenever I need to get some aggression out, I just go back to the East Coast. Right. Just boom, and then I'll just keep it moving. Boom, keep it moving. Walk down the street. Hey, what's your problem? <laughs> I'm not made for the East Coast. I'm such a softy. I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> uh, that You know what? That's one of the things, like, I really think is so beautiful about you, Jessica, honestly. <laughs> no, when I first moved here, I was so lost. I want to tell you, like, I said what I meant, meant what I said. I didn't mince words. If I thought it was hot as balls, I'd say it's hot as balls. I thought someone was being a racist dick, I'd say they were a racist dick. That's what I like about you. <laughs> I went to the DMV once and I, I walked up there and it took me a second. I was shuffling in my purse for papers that I needed. And some, and before you even ask, yes, yes, she was. She goes, do you need a translator? Oh, hell no. The translator. And she was talking loud. And I was like, and she's like, tu hablas espanol. And I was like, do you not speak English or something? What? Do you need a translator? What? Right. What is the problem? <laughs> Let's see. And I, I was like, how about we just not, how about you just take care of my driver's licensing? And not be a race stick. How about that? Yeah. Because it was it was June. I got my class B license June 2018. And yeah, that was my DMV experience. You're like, if you'll notice that little veteran mark. <laughs> yeah, straight up. <laughs> Seriously. Jeez. But and that's the thing, like, I had a real hard time fitting in here because I like I I have no filter. I have no filter. And like the racism here is really, it, it like back home, if someone was racist, that they, they will call you out your name with their whole chest, mm -hmm. then, you know, and then prepare for the ass whooping to follow here. It's more like, like a silent whistle almost like, it's not what they say. It's what they don't say. Like, oh, girl, with the email, what was her name? Christy, Christine, Christina, whatever. Yeah. And she was like, you know, but if people were acting ratchet and I told Julene to come get her people, I'd be wrong. Did that see? She didn't say she didn't say I was ratchet. 
like she was just like she was being racist though and that's yeah. what i found the racism out here is like it's more or less what they don't say yeah yeah and i agree with you it's it's more of like the ways that people aren't included or the ways that like because people want to be seen it's like i think here because i thought a lot about that too because that's an observation i've had and i think based a lot on our conversations you know um but I think a lot of it is wanting to keep perception and racists are evolving, you know, and they understand that like, they can't keep, they can't keep loud and proud shouting it in certain spaces because it's not going to be tolerated, but they're still like, well, we still want to be racist though. We still want to do it. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and just go. Pff. Hey. <laughs> You know, yeah. and it's just like, it, it, it almost is grosser to me. Yeah, well, and, and that's the thing, too. It's like, racists will always parade around their friends that are also people of color. Right. As if, like, that just gives them a hood pass or something to say outlandish shit. Or, or um, what's the other thing, like, that made me, like, it... it it just irritates my soul. Um, oh, when people come up to me, they're, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, blah, blah, blah. And they say, well, you're so well-spoken. No, ma'am. What? No, ma'am. As opposed to what? Yeah, what <laughs> were you expecting? What, 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 what <laughs> were you expecting that that's the, the statement you make? Mm. Right? And, or... Um, <sighs> Or the question, how long have you been in the country? I'm going to go with 40 years, bro. 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> how long have you been in the country? Like, I like to turn it around, <laughs> although I don't get asked. I don't get asked that question a lot. And when I do, it's really a specific reason. But yeah, you know. and it's it's so wild to me. That's why I said, like, California racism is weird. It's weird. There, it's not what you say, it's what you don't say. Yeah. Yep. And, and then, like, like, the subversion of how people are treated, like, I see a lot of, like, restaurants putting people in, like, oh, you want to be on the patio? We'll put you in the entrance. Like, I just saw this woman who was, like, I get the worst service going out by myself, you know, and because she's a Black woman who just, like, wants to go out to dinner, and instead of putting her in, like, one of the regular patio seats, they stuff her, like, right in the main entrance. They, like, pull a table out. So she's, like, you know what I mean? It was just this whole weird thing, and then they left her sitting for 25 minutes without coming to even, like, ask if she wanted something to drink, like, not even, like, starting that whole interaction off. Oh, hell no. And you know what's wild, too? We can't just while out. Because it's like we have to pay attention to the space we take up, yep. how aggressive we appear, right. and you know it's even worse because, like, as you know, I'm you know I'm Filipino and Spanish, which yeah, you know that's like Black, Indigenous, Latina, and I'm almost expected. My aggression is almost expected and almost fetishized, but right. you know, let a Black American woman while out the way I do sometimes and oh she's too aggressive she's not right. this she's not that she's too loud right it's it's disgusting is what yeah. it is setting a boundary isn't yelling seriously setting a boundary isn't yelling <laughs> <laughs> so and yeah. you know speaking of restaurants like I went to Noi Pits with my friend Luna, shout out to Luna and my husband. Luna. And when I went in there, I thought, oh, cool, it's a Filipino restaurant. Yo, oh, these are my folks. Okay, let's do this. I went in there and the waiter refused to take my husband's drink order. Like, on, I put it on everything I love. My husband will still tell the story because we walk by there every time we go to the movies. It's Noi Pits in West Covina. And my friend Luna is like, what the hell? What, like, why won't they take this? Take his order? They wouldn't bring him his drinks. And I'm like, excuse me. Can, can we get our drinks, please? 
his food. Like the waiter would not even speak to my husband. It was wild. I went to speak to the manager and I was, I was really upset. Like, I was I was upset. No, I was like, no, I'm gonna speak to the manager. I'm like, I'm not. My husband was like, we're just gonna go. We're gonna. I was like, no, I'm gonna speak to the manager. I'm gonna speak to the manager right now. The waiter doubled down and told me I should be ashamed of myself. Shut <laughs> the fuck up. Um, so serious. Oh hell no. So yeah, that happened at Noy Pits in West Covina, in the Edwards Plaza. Dude, fuck that place. Oh, yeah. And I was like, if we order Uber Eats, then they won't have a choice but to serve us. Yeah, but why would you want to give money to the business? Which, I don't know. Which sucks because it's like it's food that like comfort food that you don't have access to anymore. Yeah. If you like want to make a stand about it, you know, or you have to do something like that. And like, oh, I guess I can't go into the restaurant because like they're racist against my like one of my family members. They like the his issue wasn't even it wasn't even like I guess like the issue he, he would not have had an issue with us separately but the fact that we were a couple was his issue. Mm, oh, I see. So it's not brand of racism. It's the we should all stay in our own racial lanes racism. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Is that what it Pretty is. <laughs> So yeah, at the this is the point in time, Jessica, where you would tell me to come get my people. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but but I actually wouldn't. I actually wouldn't because that would be racist because it's punching down, not punching upward. See how this See? works, people. See how this works. <laughs> I'm a white lady. I only get to punch usually in one direction. It's white men, baby. It's white men. <laughs> I'm a poom. We didn't all punch out white men. And other white ladies. But ba poom. <laughs> yeah, but uh, back to your experience with those people in the walkway. It's so it's so interesting to hear about that because it's like people of color always have to be aware of the space they take up. It's just I'll, I'll try and imagine what it would be like to just. Take oh, up I was space say, and not notice, and it's can just you imagine? Like, yeah, I could. I couldn't even imagine. <laughs> no, I mean, I was even like, I don't know. Even as a woman, you know, even as a white woman, it still is kind of strange being out in certain spaces by myself. You know what I mean? So it's. I mean, I get it, but not to that extent for sure. You know. So and but. it's and it's really cool because the someone took a poll. And was like, if there were no men in the world, what would you do? Do you know the number one answer was take a walk at night? And that's that's so crazy. I would do anything. It is so normalized that we don't realize. We don't realize it. Mm -hmm. That taking a walk at night. Something as simple as taking a walk at night is like, this is what I would do if there were no men in the world. There have been so many things over my lifetime that people have told me I shouldn't do by myself because I'm a woman. And they're all things that I chose to do anyway, because fuck that. I'm not going to be told what not to do because I'm a, I'm a certain gender. I just, I, I understand that as a woman, I do have to be more aware and aware of my surroundings and make choices that men don't have to think about. Like, I mean, but I'm not going to give up my ability to do something. That being said, there are safety issues. I won't go to certain places because of safety issues. Yeah. And that's just, that's real. You know what I mean? But yeah. I traveled in Egypt, you know, I went with myself and one other um, woman, you know, and we went and traveled in Egypt and I just had to keep us both really safe and make good choices about that. Cause we had some really sketchy situations that this other push person put me in and Ooh. yeah, yeah. Mm. We'll, we'll tell that story sometime, but I almost got killed. <laughs> what? Uh, the, the, the threat was certainly there. I could have been, I very well could, it very well could have been a bad situation if I hadn't um, been very, aware of my surroundings and if i hadn't gone with this person she probably wouldn't have come back <laughs> so oh girl 
Yeah. So Oof. we can talk about that later. But I mean, there are just so many situations like that where I've been told, like, you shouldn't go traveling by yourself. Mm, if I go off, I'm going to go live in France. Um, you know, you shouldn't go like you shouldn't go wherever, wherever you shouldn't go walking at night. Like I go running at night. You know, it's just about being aware of your surroundings. You know, I don't ever have two headphones and there are a lot of things I have to think about. And I, I keep myself in safe areas, but, you know, it's like I'm not going to stop myself from doing certain things unless it's a real, real safety hazard. And at some point, you got to ask yourself, like, where is the line from being a good friend and taking and protecting yourself? Because I tell my son, when I have the talk with my son, I said, and if you're a friend, I said, you know, it, it's not the sex talk, y'all. It's the other one. Yeah. Um, when, I had my t- when I had the talk with my son, I told him, like, if your friends are doing foolishness, I'm going to need you to leave them there. Mm-hmm. You're not a bad friend. The goal is to make it home alive yeah. every single day. Well, so, and having, you know, having a, a black son, yeah, that's definitely like a conversation that you, it's not that you have to have it because of him. You have to have it because of the rest of society. Yeah. So that's, that's interesting too. Like, where's the line? At what point are you being a good friend and risking yourself? Like, at what point is, is it okay to disengage and still be a good friend. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I I told my son, a good friend wouldn't put you in that position. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right, though. Yeah. Hmm. So, that was cool. I went to New York. I did to the Morgan Library and Museum. Yay. And I took photographs at Grand Central Station. And I was talking to people. It was kind of like my love letter to the city. And I told them, I said, so what do you think is quintessentially New York? And I walked up to random New Yorkers. Now, you can imagine I got some pretty colorful responses. But the ones that did stop and answer, shout out to y'all. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> um, and it's a, like I'm cutting the video this weekend. So keep an eye out. I'm gonna, I'll probably drop it next week sometime. Nice. And oh, what else? I did Grand Central Station. I walked up to random people and pizza. I had pizza. It was so great. Yum. Yum. There's, I'm just so mad that I did not get a chance to purchase bagels. I wanted to purchase bagels, bring you some, bring myself some. Aww. And it was, but I had pizza. So sorry. Sorry, not sorry. That's okay. No worries. No worries at all. No, and I'm I'm gonna be doing some shorter videos on our Instagram of my Boston trip. But those just they take a long a lot more uh time and like emotional like you know drive or emotional kind of output than you'd think really to to set up those videos, you know. Oh my god. So, yes, girl. Yeah. yeah. I have been I've been <laughs> I've been a little slacky on our TikTok and Instagram, which I will fix. It's just, I have a resume due. Shout out to Salvador. Thank you for hiring my company to do your resume. And uh, so many things going on at the part-time job. Um, uh, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say who told everybody about quiet quitting and acting your wage. I'm not I'm not gonna say any names, but someone someone might have told their her coworkers to act their wage and uh stop doing two or three jobs for the wage of one person. Oh no. <laughs> whoever whoever could that have been? <laughs> yeah. Is that a is that a twinkle of pride in your eye, Jessica? Oh, I I mean <laughs> <laughs> you know i love when people act their wage <laughs> yeah so it's been it's been interesting and uh i'm finally getting more getting better staff the, during the two to four which is what i've been i have been advocating for and you know 
it finally dawned on me. They do. They did not need to hire anybody for the two to four. Why? Because I would stress myself out, work the drive through, bag my shit, uh, work the front end. So instead of staffing us for two or three, they would just leave me. So I don't. I don't know who quiet quit their job, but. For whatever reason, anytime there was one person in the front, that one person would only work in the drive-thru and tell the other person in the front that someone else who was not them would be with them in a minute. <laughs> the organization isn't there for me. I don't get it. <laughs> oh, but I finally got staffing for the two to four. Good for you, dude. That's It shouldn't take all that, though. Yeah, poor Good customers. Mm -hmm. Anyway, oh, that comedian Vince Royale came into the came into the store. Oh, yeah, and um, he did a he did a secret sauce prank. So you can see me on Instagram showing my ass. I'm pretty sure you heard. Listen, Linda, I'm not finna play with you. Okay, who? Come get your girl. <laughs> Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh. Anywho, it's time for a little bit of fun. Oh, is there any um any LGBTQ news? Any anything important or noteworthy happen? This isn't news, but I'm still queer. <laughs> Whoop! Still bisexual. <laughs> Last time I checked. Okay. No, because you know, there's always something crazy coming out of Texas. There so, is some new law always coming out of Texas. No, I mean, you're not wrong about that. There probably is something out of Texas that I'm just not paying attention to. I just don't have the emotional bandwidth for it right now. I don't either, and I should be paying more attention, but I'll probably. It's go what we do. Yeah. <laughs> oh. right, real quick. Everybody was afraid for me to travel across country by myself with the kids, right? When I moved here, I I packed up my little minivan yeah. with the kids and the dog, and we moved. And we, we got ghosts. We left. Yeah. And the only time where it got really sketchy was, like, Texas. Mm -hmm. I pulled in Texas to fill up with gas. And usually Amarillo is not bad. Right, Amarillo's not not really bad. The gas is cheap, and nobody really bothers you there. For whatever reason, I pulled in, put my card in. I just got a real bad feeling, like my my ancestors were telling me to leave, and I just I I was tired. Like it was late. I was tired. I was so sleepy. I was just gonna crash at the truck stop. I looked around and there were some sketchy looking people just like watching me and tell me why this car followed me until I let I was out of the state. No, thank you. I was like, oh shit. No. No, that has some like banjo in the background vibes. I don't I don't I'm like telling you, it was wild. Like this this I literally saw the same truck. Same truck follow me until I got to the New Mexico state line. Shit was creepy. So yeah, we we have to be more aware and safe, but don't let that limit you from doing things, ladies. We can do it. We just we just gotta take precautions, just like anything else. Yeah, maybe even more precautions. Oh, definitely more precautions. Keep your, you know, let people know where you're at always, you know, keep a location on, let people know your location or have like one of those like family tracker kind of apps, um, you know, make sure that you don't put two headphones in, make sure that you are looking around doing the kind of line of sight that you have to do. Um, pay attention to people that are kind of staying in your general vicinity for too long. You see, these are all the things that like, a man could never like a man would never have to think about these types of things, you know, unless they're, you know, unless they're a person of color. I, I imagine that a person of color would have to think about these types of things as well, but it's not yeah. where my experience lies. 
Yeah, it's just, and so just don't, don't be afraid to leave your home. Just, yeah. you know, keep an eye on your drink, travel in pairs if you can. Mm -hmm. If you're traveling alone, just keep, keep aware of your surroundings. Take notice of people who are staring a little too hard at you. Yep. Cars that maybe you might see one block, next block, take mm -hmm. a left turn. They take a left turn too. Notice those things. Yeah. Spatial awareness, y'all. Mm -hmm. But check it. That's our little bit of serious. Eh, eh, eh. It's time for some fun. <laughs> fun. <laughs> okay. So you you want to introduce a movie? Yeah. So we watched uh, Tu Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newman. And it was, I had never seen it before now. I know um, Julian has talked a few times about this being one of her favorite drag films. And I had never seen it. I literally, I came into it completely blind. I had seen like one of the scenes, one of the ending scenes, but I didn't know it was from this movie until it like came up. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is where this is from <laughs> but yeah no i thought it was so good and it was a, uh, it was kind of surprising it was surprising and it was a good reflection on you know in both ways not not letting first appearances make or break you know and that's both with people who are being negative to you and that in one of some of those situations and also, you know, kind of neutral parties that you don't know anything about, you know, and, and kind of trying to leave your biases behind. And and I thought it was a really cool arc that they had of, of those types of feelings. So, OK, who was your favorite character? Oh, my God. I don't I had so many favorite characters. I don't know. Ah. I, and you know, and of course I'm really bad with names. Um, I really liked the, the, the housewife, the one that played Rizzo. Stalker Channing. Yeah, Stalker Channing. Thank you. She was absolutely amazing. And I just thought, you know, I, I liked her character development too, of like going from this place of really not having a voice into really finding one for herself you know, in, in whatever way and, and seeing that she had a, a good trajectory, you know, for future headed. Yeah. Um, I loved her too. She, and I love the theme of finding your voice because you know, the woman who didn't speak at all, but loved theater. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and finding yes. common ground with people who you don't think you have anything in common with. That was so sweet. Like the first time when she started like talking and just like, it was such a sweet moment. She said, Dorothy Dandridge. And I was like, yes! <laughs> Dorothy Dandridge was such an epic, epic actress. Like, just wow. Her and just wow. <laughs> yeah. Aww. And well, the theme of finding your voice also acceptance yes because stalker channing we find out in the end knew the whole time yes that's the scene i'd seen before and i didn't realize it was from that movie i kind of thought it might be as i was watching the movie but then when it got to the end and it was and i'm just like crying <laughs> like oh, ugly yeah. tears like yeah oh um, what about the scene that lives rent free in my head is when when Vita starts um starts seasoning the 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 sauce in the pan and oh. she like well she's like no she like stalker channing is just such a great actress yeah. like you felt she was afraid yeah. she's like oh no 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 this is not Virgil doesn't like seasonings yeah, and she's trying to scoop it out, and it's like, I mean, we all know that's not going to work, you know what I mean? Like, she might be able to get, like, some of it off, but it's not going to... Oh, that was, yeah, that was heartbreaking. That whole thing was heartbreaking, but I was really glad to see there was some better resolution, more positive resolution at the end for yeah, that. Yeah, some um, come up, and she's like, sometimes there are some men that just need to be hit back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man yeah it was such a good one and so everyone i wore my um i wore my feathered robe so you definitely know, it's, giving vita boam it is like this it's a whole production yes it's a Catherine delish it's something i had been eyeballing these things for years and years and years and she did like one of these pinks, like, I guess she didn't like the color of the feathers. Like it was too light. Like she likes a little bit of a darker color and she put like this drastic discount. And I was just like, it was the beginning of the pand pandemic. And I was like, I'm never going to have the opportunity to buy one of these again. This is far too low discount for me to not take this up. <laughs> yeah, it's, de it's definitely giving me to bohem. Okay. <laughs> so here is, um, a fun fact about the movie. Ooh. Uh, John Leguizamo was on set and he's in an interview and talks about how his wife's there and his brother comes up to his wife and said, yo, who's that hot chick on there? And his wife goes, yo, that's John. <laughs> oh my gosh. Stop it. Yes. Apparently a lot of people thought John Leguizamo looked really good as a woman. That's so funny. I mean, but also, yes. Yes. Also, yes. <laughs> um, and uh, some other fun facts. At the time that this film was released, uh, John Leguizamo was like one of the top, was like a really funny comedian. He just dropped a pass. He was really famous, like, at the time. Wesley Snipes and Patrick Swayze were, like, top action stars at the time. Wesley Snipes, you know, did um, Demolition Man, Blade, all those 90s action films. Patrick Swayze did Dirty Dancing, uh, Roadhouse, um, uh, uh, Point Break. I, I was about to say, what's the name of that really terrible Keanu Reeves movie? <laughs> Where he's like, the manliest of men, right? Anything of mine is yours. Right. You can have her. Blah, blah. I'm going to jump out of airplanes. We're going to play chicken. And see right. Who pull the parachute first. Oh my God. Whoever pulls the parachute first loses. But in that in that game of chicken, are there any real winners? It's like no, but I didn't pull the parachute. I died, but I won. Right. Jokes on you. Jokes on both of you. <laughs> so these were like top action stars, and there were so many cameos. So freaking many cameos. How, yeah, many, yeah, how yeah. many cameos did you spot? Oh, shit. I didn't count. Do you have a number? Um, I saw, I saw, uh, what's her, the bunny. I want to say something bunny. I saw Hedgewick. I saw Robin Williams. Yeah. Oh, Robin Williams was such a good character. John Jingle James, wait, yeah. John James Jingleheimer Smith. So funny. So many drag icons. The best quote from Robin Williams is, oh, no, nobody wants to see me. I'm ugly and I'm hairy. <laughs> I don't want to take attention away from the stars. Just let me be a side role. You're right. Oh, I know. I got a little sad when Robin Williams rolled into set. And just his, like, <laughs> that whole interaction was so funny of, like, oh, we want to get, like, you know, tickets and da-da-da-da-da. And he kept talking them into, like, worse and worse deals. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, here, we're going to give you, like, $50 for a car. And I was like, $50? <laughs> Jesus. Now you knew that car was going to die halfway through. Oh, my God. I know. I like how the comment was, it's never going to get you to where you're going. <laughs> And they're just like, it's gorgeous. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
oh, RuPaul. RuPaul right. is RuPaul, there. Yep. Um, did I see Leslie in there? Not a not a famous drag queen, but a famous a famous uh, co- lesbian comedian. Maybe Leslie. I, don't know. I swear, I I thought I saw her in the crowd. Hmm. May have been, may have been. I'm not sure. Yeah, I I didn't expect as many cameos as there were. Oh, so, so many so really fantastic cameos. I love that. So some criticism for this film was how do you have a drag film without where all the actual drag queens are cameos? That's the thing. That was what that was one of my criticisms as well. Um, yeah, the fact that we did have just like cis from, from our understanding, cis heterosexual males who didn't really have any ties to the community were playing the top roles, you know, and especially because they were kind of played not as drag queens. I mean, I feel like I have the sense of drag queens being a persona that people put on for a stage presence and this didn't feel like that. It felt like them packing to leave for real life. And they just happened to also be men who dressed in drag. But you know what I mean? Just generally. So it didn't have the same kind of vibe that I think of maybe what drag has has turned into. But it almost felt like it almost felt like they they were almost playing trans, like in that kind of you know what I mean? Hmm. Interesting. Because it would have been easier for them just to go across country like as men, you know, with their bags packed and show up and put their makeup on and yeah, and do the thing, which is kind of what I anticipate and what I expect when somebody goes to a show. Huh. So see, I yeah. see, and that I don't know. I genuinely have no idea. So hmm. if it. Anybody out there in the audience want to email us at yeah. bitesexual at gmail.com and enlighten us, feel free. Because that was just, I, and I'm not necessarily right about that. It was just something I thought about, you know, in the sense of like, they really were trying to blend in as women. You know, they were, they were trying to blend in as women more than they were trying to be performers who also dress like women. Yeah, because... So. In Priscilla and Queen of the Desert, when they were not in drag, they were gay men. And the one who always went by she, her pronouns, you could tell that was more of a transition, kind of a, this person yeah. lived as a woman. Well, her name was uh, Bernice, right? Bernice, Bernice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I Bernice. Think it was Bernice she was, or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, from what I understand, like she went through the, the operation. So yeah, so she yeah, yeah she, she, she yep. actually went. Yep. So and I understand drag to be like larger than life, like yeah. a transformation, right? So I think that could be a consequence of either straight people writing drag characters or or straight people playing drag characters. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. One, one or the other, but I am going to attempt to not look at it through like a modern lens. Sure. Because in the 90s, Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes, and John Leguizamo don't star in this film. Let's be honest, does this film get made? Right. Right, 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 right. Well, no, of course. Because there has to be some like star presence behind it, or it's either either it's going to be made and it's not going to be any sort of success anywhere, and it's not going to be viewed by anyone, you know. And it's or not, you have to, yeah, yeah. It's not the iconic film that it became, right? Let me go grab a water. Hold on one sec. Okay. I'm so thirsty. My refrigerator's right there, so. Yes. How are you faring in the tiny house situation with this heat? I have my AC up on upstairs and then I have the fan that's kind of pushing it down onto me, but like 
not really. You know what I mean? It's probably like a good like 85, 90 degrees in here. So, oh, girl. <laughs> So I am for, for everyone's understanding, I'm like scantily clad in my home because no, no. You see, <laughs> like, I am scantily clad in my home too. Like you get except me, I'm significantly larger. larger. <laughs> so you know, I ha I have more clothes. But weigh in day was yesterday. Yeah. Did you see that? Your girl is down 18 pounds. Yeah, nice job. Nice job. And it's not even like weight loss is my goal. Walking is my goal. So <laughs> that's yeah, from yeah. walking, practice walking and, and Zumba, modified Zumba. I might put a video. What do you think? I should that's put out funny. a video of doing Zumba in the chair. Because uh, oh, sometimes yeah. my back hurts too bad to do it. I, you know, I like the idea of posting things that people who maybe have like challenges standing up all the time. You know, I think about that a lot. Like there are, there aren't a lot of activities for people who have, you know, a hard time being upright for a long time or being like standing up for a long time. Cause that's like fatigue is one of the biggest things I hear about from my friends with like chronic illness stuff. It's the fact that they have to stand up or they have to be in a certain position for a long time where it gets really uncomfortable. And I get that. Yeah. I think so because when when I ended up in the roller litter, like I thought my life was over. I don't know if I ever showed you my old Instagram. It's still up. Um, mm. It's still up. I just apparently Instagram doesn't let us delete our Instagrams. So I tried to delete it because every time I saw it, it just made me it, it just made me depressed. Like I just wanted to cry. Mm. Um, but but it's that Asian thoroughbred. Don't judge me. <laughs> I was a teenage dirtbag. So <laughs> you need yeah. to do that teenage dirtbag trend that's going on. I, I have, I've harvested some pictures. Good. I would love to see those. I need to see if I have any, cause all my shit burned up in a tragic fire. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I need, but I need to find the, the other ones. Yeah, you know the ones. The ones with, yeah, those yeah. ones. <laughs> I, know, I know the ones. <laughs> I know. I need to find some of those ones. I'm pretty sure I have one where I'm holding, I'm hold, I have a shirt that goes all the way down to my belly button. I had to put double sided tape just so my tatas didn't fall out. And I was, I had my finger like this. And then I had one shirt like this holding it like this. <laughs> I love it. And then, and then uh, my ex decided to be a dick and print out a picture of me. Thank God. Thank God. He had enough sense to crop out the blunt in my hand. It, I had a blunt and a beer in one hand. And the picture is like he cropped it from here to here. And I was like this. <laughs> I, have, I have a few pictures from parties and like, you know. <laughs> Things where I'm yeah, like, he put it in my daughter's book bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see you, sir. I see yeah. you. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, oh. I, I think sorry, back to this movie. I think this movie is about growth. The fact that it was made in the 90s. Shocking. Just shocking. The fact that they, it was made in the 90s and they got some of the hugest action stars mm -hmm. to play. It. And, you know, fellas, you guys are all out there like, oh, I could never. See, that's what's the problem. These men aren't men anymore. Who do you think is manly? Let, let's talk about your idea of manly yeah. because... Wesley Snipes, Marshall. I was say, do you think you're ass. more manly than Wesley Snipes? Okay, okay. <laughs> do you do you Patrick think you're more manly than Patrick's? Okay. <laughs> I'll make a to you. Okay. Uh, you know who else wore a dress? Ben Rames, Tyler Perry, exactly. Martin Lawrence, Eddie uh -huh. Murphy. Yeah, I was gonna say, yep, yep. So, um, yeah, yeah. Get your Robin life, Robin Williams. 
Robin Williams. Yes, Robin Williams also wore a dress. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Doubtfire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how about we how about we don't trip? Okay. <laughs> we're we're good. But listen, Julian, it's only okay to dress and drag if you're trying to sneakily see your children that your wife is trying to keep you from seeing. That's not what courts are for. <laughs> Yeah, that's not what courts are for. And furthermore, oh. I have news for you, fellas. Nobody's trying to keep you from your kids. Let me explain to you. I've had I've had these kids packs packed since they arrived here this summer. Nobody's keeping these kids from you. As soon as you're ready to stop being a whole a whole irresponsible douchebag, whole irresponsible. Here are the bags and the kids. Have at it. I'm gonna I'm have I'm gonna I'm have a, my little summer with my husband. It's not gonna be a hot girl summer. It's gonna be a hot wife summer. I, I don't know yep. if I'm using that correctly, but right. Nobody's keeping you kids from you. Come yep. get them. Come get them. Bounce packed. Well, yeah, <laughs> and I think I think the miss that's the misconception is that that parent and it, I'm not a parent so this is coming from a place of that okay um but you know I feel like from what I've been told of my my parent friends it's not that they want to keep kids from dads it's that they don't trust that dads have their kids best interest in mind if or trust that their needs are going to be taken care of or appropriately responded to when they're visiting or out of the other person's home and that's not based on nothing that's yep. based on all of the experiences that have led up to whatever that termination of the relationship has has there's there's a reason you're not being trusted yeah I'm so like, take a look you know and to be fair to be fair you know there there are some ladies out there that are like this relationship doesn't work you don't get yeah. me you don't get the kid either you there know, which, be people with bad intentions in that direction too. I agree. But it doesn't, you know, it's not, it's not always like that. And sometimes really and truly, she's just tired of your shit. She's just tired of your shit. And she just wants you to hurt the way she did, which that's, it's, it takes therapy and time to get there. But no matter what has transpired between the two of you, you've got to put these kids first. And you know, I'm I'm not innocent either. Like I've I've been petty. Like I I have my my ex um my ex did some foul shit to and that led up to the divorce um involving my older kids that were not his. So, you know, for me, it was really hard for me to get to a place where I can be like, okay, you know, here's our daughter, we can co-parent. Because there there was a there was a good period of time where I couldn't look at his face without wanting to do harm to him. And you know, it, it took it took therapy, time, and and realizing that, you know, my, my daughter needs her dad too. He needs yeah. she needs she needs my husband and she needs her dad. So, you know, when when you keep it there, you find it's easier to co-parent, even when the other person is a high conflict birth parent. Mm -hmm. true, true story. He didn't even want me to meet his new wife at all. He, I was like, look, I don't care. What's going on? You know, <laughs> how are you doing? When we finally met, we got along really well. She was so clutch in trying to, in getting my ex to cooperate in a lot of the situations. So but I almost wonder if he didn't want you to meet because he knew that you'd get along. And that, <laughs> be, and that she would be a person that would be like a reasonable voice to his unreasonable kind of attitude. Yeah, he, you know? he is a, he, he's a textbook narcissist. Like uh, he is. And he, he's not, He's not diagnosed, he's untreated, but he's a textbook narcissist. His wife has been so clutch. I 100 percent believe in step parents. I was raised by a step parent. My boys are being raised by a step parent. I I I, I see you. Shout out to Yvette. <laughs> but yeah. Hmm. 
tangents. Things aren't always as they seem. Things mm -hmm. are not always as they seem. You know, don't don't judge a book by its cover. And people can change their minds mm -hmm. if you give them half a chance. So, yeah. Oh, uh, and definitely come see this movie. This movie is dope. Two Wong Food. Thanks for everything. Julie Newmar with Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes. So good. Uh, John Leguizamo and um, Soccer Channing. Yeah, I was I was about to say Rizzo. My bad. Ah, that's okay. Soccer Channing. <laughs> Um, fun little fact: I won a, uh, I went to a Grease sing along that was like Olivia Newton John. Which, by the way, don't rewatch Grease if you haven't seen it recently because it's like just it's it's trash. But like, um, you know, for like memory I purposes, do. oh, bless oh, me. We could get into that another point if we'd like to. I, I have a lot I of, Greece. I have a lot of things to say about Grease. <laughs> yeah, but, we should talk about Grease next week. We can um, talk about Greece. Absolutely. We absolutely can, can. even if it's not. Friends. I will wear the costume that I, by the way, won the costume contest. In. You won the costume? Hey, get it. I won, I won free movies for a year. I won a membership to their little theater. And it's like this cute little podunk kind of theater. And I won free movies and free popcorn for a year. Get okay. it, girl. Who did you dress up as? I just wore a rockabilly dress and like put a scarf in my hair and called it good. <laughs> I was like, but I did tell the I did tell uh, the guy I was with. I was like, by the way, I just to prepare you, I just tend to win costume contests and coloring contests. Like, so just throwing that out there. I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but just so you're prepared. <laughs> oh, wait, that I is so cool. <laughs> we, we can definitely we can watch this movie even if it's not LGBTQ adjacent. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, there's, homo there's homophobia in it, so we could talk about that. <laughs> is there? There is a little bit, absolutely. <gasps> yeah. See, now I have to rewatch it just to find the homophobia. Yeah, it's it's there. Don't worry, you'll see it. You'll see it. <laughs> How did I not see it before? It's one of those movies where I know that, like, I've seen it a billion times, and I knew it was like had some really trash pieces to it because I I have a photographic memory, and I like I've seen it enough times that I like remember the whole movie. But I definitely caught a few little like one liners that I was like, "Ooh, I did not understand or hear that before," you know. So, not see. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. So next week. <laughs> We're uh, talking about Greece. Yeah, so go 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 go. <laughs> if you I know, can't. you know. If you know, you're not. <laughs> yeah, no. I was. I was. Oh my gosh! Speaking of singalongs, um, when I reported on the death of Olivia Newton John. Mm -hmm. Okay, name the Olivia Newton John song that you sang. On three, when you found out one, two, three, Sandra D. Oh, you, I was gonna say hopelessly devoted, but okay. Uh, I was like, because uh, the that's the one that stuck in my head is hopelessly devoted, and I don't know why because I don't even really like that song that much. To you. <laughs> it's like girlfriend. Oh, I I will save the rest of my commentary for next week because there's also fan theories about Sandy, and there's other things that I will I will in, I will enlighten us next week. The fan theory that lives around free in my head is that they died at the beach. Yes, yes, that's the one. That is the one. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, just that she had that she had died, and that was her like having like a fever dream before she died, and then they like fly up into the clouds because she's dead. Did anybody else think Chitty Chitty Bang Bang when they flew up into the sky? That's, Remember Chitty Chitty yes, Bang Bang, sure the flying do. car? I sure do. There's a lot of toxic shit in that movie too. That couple okay, that okay. keeps trying to kill each other. There's a legit couple that hate each other. They hate each other and they're constantly trying to legitimately off one another. Dang. See, I was a kid last that time. Song I saw like, you're my little Snooky book. 
and you're my teddy bear. It's you're my little stucky book, and you're my teddy bear. Together we're a nookie bookie ookie ookie pair. You know that yeah. one? We're trying to kill each other that whole scene. <laughs> That's the purpose of that scene. They hate each other. <laughs> like the toxic monogamy is so ripe. That's so crazy. <laughs> See, and you know what? Like, I'm I'm a pretty open-minded person. Like, I'm yeah. in a monogamous relationship now. Yeah. You know, and with with a man. Mm -hmm. But I mean that that's something no one's that we perfect, just, okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think my mom my man might be pretty close. That's a good man right there. I gotta say, like we have disagreements, and you know, I'll be I'll be the first to say that sixty percent of them were caused because I I don't know how to communicate. Like I I kind of came up in the hood, and my thing was never let them know your next move. So I'll just do something and be like, I did this, which is not helpful <laughs> if you're in a partnership. <laughs> <laughs> hey, made this big old life change that I'd let you know. <laughs> Thought I'd tell you, you know. No so the kids have already a, so the kids have a play date next week, just so you know. <laughs> yes, I decided that. And I'm buying a car. So right. Jeez, I already please. applied. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, my husband's a good man. Within our first few dates, we already discuss expectations. Good. That's I good. said I've been I've been in a trouble. I've never been in like a full on polyamorous relationship, but Ooh. I've been I've been in a trouble, like multiple mm -hmm. troubles. That that was like my preferred dating situation after my divorce was trouble. Fuck it, why not? Right. But he and I talked a little bit, and we figured out that would not work for us. So yeah. So he asked me what I got out of being in a trouble. I said, "Well, I need, you know, I need some real masculine energy, and then sometimes I just need some some care. You know, sometimes I just need TLC, and I don't always trust people to lead me." Um. Uh, uh, I've always jokingly talked about how we we are in a like I am I have a very submissive personality when I meet someone mm -hmm. I say we are in a dominant submissive um, relationship he's like no we're not that's just us that's just what we like and I'm just like that that's that's a BDSM relationship there just saying yeah exactly <laughs> but for me, I had to trust him to do that, to relinquish that control. Mm -hmm. And once he understood the balance of masculine and feminine energy that I needed, he just, the monogamy was easy. Nice. There you go. It's, it's about, I feel like the communication with your partner and what they need sexually and emotionally is important. So yeah. for some people, that's a polyamorous relationship is what they need. And then for for some people like me, I could go either way. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean me, I don't, I don't know that I like. I've had primary partnerships while I've been polyamorous, but I kind of prefer to be like solo poly, um, which I'm finding kind of more terminology through the the community. But it's that's what I'm comfortable with. I have what amounts to and this is not as as surface level as this will sound but it's like a lot of really good friends that i have that are basically like friends with benefits you know we like we're still really good friends you know we hang out we care about each other you know but i have partners who have other partners you know like are in other long-term monogamous or not monogamous they're in non-monogamous relationships or else i wouldn't be in a relationship with them but like I know their partners, you know, it's like I there it's not a it's a communication thing. Like you said, it's it's all about making sure everybody's comfortable. And like I've gone and done events with other people in there, like with my partner and like their partner, you know, 
which is super fun. So yeah, I just, I, it's, it works differently for different people and you just have to figure out what works best for you because sure monogamy works for some people, but I think that in society, the way that we view monogamy is usually really heavily weighted on the woman of the group having to stay at a certain level to be desired. It's usually on the woman to kind of yeah. the, the, the weight, the burden of the relationship is usually on the woman. Like you have to keep your man happy, blah, 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 which I'm not about, <laughs> I'm about keeping me happy and expressing yeah. the boundaries that I need and the needs that I have to make myself happy. There's no way exactly. to do that for me. Exactly. And to be clear, there's nothing wrong with having dinner ready when your man gets home or whatever, no. whatever. But it's about communicating your needs. And balance of, of of everything, you know, like it can't just be the expectation that you're like working full time. And so is your husband. But then you also have to do everything in the house and raise all the children and everything. And like, ew, no, ma'am. <laughs> like, nope, no, no ma'am. <laughs> no, no, indeed, no, ma'am. Like I, I have seen enough of my friends be in situations where it's like their husband's legitimately useless. <laughs> legitimately like oh wow legitimately useless like i've had friends like get have to go to the hospital or whatever and their husband cannot function mm -hmm. oh wow yeah Listen. can't get the kids to where they need to be can't do this can't figure out dinners can't blah 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 and this is with people bringing dinners to them you know it's just like Fellas, fellas, you, you marry a partner, you'll marry your mama. Just saying. Exactly. Yeah. No woman wants to raise a grown man. No. Nope. And I have to say yeah. on the other end of the spectrum, I have a lot of friends who aren't dealing with that because they have found partners, legitimate partners, and they have set boundaries and they have made plans about housework. And like, guys, you live in the house too. You live there too. You also need to anticipate anticipate the needs of the home. Exactly. Yeah. So and, you know, whatever situation you decide, there's no shame in it. You like oh. what you like, mm -hmm. and if you love if you love someone who's not with it, then you got a choice to make, and that's okay too. Saying I love you, but this this is important to me. Yep. You know. So. There's no shame in that. Nope. I just I say that to say this. Look, whether whether you you prefer you prefer someone to lead your home, you prefer to have multiple partners, you prefer to have one, you prefer to be in a trouble. As long as it's making you happy and it's functioning for you, and it's consensual all the way around, Con and it's consensual all the way around. Some of y'all in non-consensual polyamorous situations where where you're in a polyamorous situation and just don't know it, but society makes you feel like you got to stand by your man no matter what. Just saying. It's okay to not be okay with stuff. <laughs> you deserve better. <laughs> you deserve to be with someone that will be honest with you. Mm-hmm. 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 We're not anyway. sponsored by them, by the way. I just happen to have this snap. <laughs> this fan, just so that everybody knows. But hey, I mean, I guess let us know, Deep Eddie. I I, I heard that. <laughs> I heard that fan. Um that great? Yeah. Um, like the, the fan that I really want. I thought it was a become fan at first, but I really want I really want to become fan. It have was you seen the become fan? No, I haven't. Om OMG. Go look up become fans. I'm like I, I need a become fan. Mm. That's that's what I need in my life. They're like huge fans. And Ooh. like this girl, this uh this lady reacts to the to videos and and she like clicks her fan. Oh, I love those. Right? Oh yeah, Imani. That's who it is. Shout out yeah. to Imani. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those are cool. 
Anyway. Yeah, those were really neat. But yeah, so this was a good conversation about all the things. All the things. Yeah. So next week we're talking about Greece. This has been another episode of Bite Sexual. Stay cool out there. We dying and baking in here. <sighs> We're doing our best. We are doing our best. Damn yeah, it. Yeah, we are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Join us next week at 3.30. We were 50% fun. 50% serious. 100%, 100% fabulous. fabulous.